Good evening. Uh, thank you, Parag, and the organizers for this invitation. So at the end of the day, you will be happy to know that this is not going to be a review of literature or a didactic lecture, but just a presentation of some of the studies done in our hospital, and also as a multi-center trial done in the South Indian Arthroplasty Academy. Now, there was no industrial funding, and this was only internally funded by our research foundation. So why all this hula bula about uh, DVT? It's because of this single fact that we know in the absence of prophylactic measures that venous thromboembolism could be from 15 to 30 percent of cases. But after the establishment of prophylactic measures, there is a huge reduction to one to two percent. And these are the studies that have quoted this figure. Now again, there are so many important studies and well-publicized literature, which again points to the fact that without prophylaxis, you can have thrombosis to a huge level. But however, non-fatal PTE is up to 3%, and fatal PTE is only about 1%. And this is the group which we are interested in looking at whether we can reduce the level. Now why did we do this study? because all these results are from Western population. And there are few studies which are coming from East Asia also, which have said that the incidence is similar to the Western population and they have recommended prophylaxis. Now, some contradictory figures. In the Indian scenario, in this published in the Indian Journal of Orthopedics, they showed that there was only 7.2% on sonographic evidence of DVT and no case of pulmonary embolism. There's been a lot of explanation why there is less DVT incidence in Indian population, like low prevalence of obesity and hyperlipidemia. Genetically, we are different. Our diet is different. But however, we have a lesser incidence of eating. The third problem is that these articles have been published at a time many years before when there was restricted ambulation and prolonged length of stay was commonplace after joint replacement. But however, we know that after regional anesthesia and now most of our patients stand and walk on the same day, there is a tremendous in decrease in the incidence of these complications. So we need to evaluate under the present context of uh, active mobilization. Lastly, we also know that many articles discuss on thromboembolic events, but not focus on the complications of prophylaxis. Now you can see over here that definitely compared to placebo and the low molecular weight, there is a huge increase in your proximal DVT in placebo. But equally, if you can see over here, when heparin is used, there is a high incidence of minor bleeding and major bleeding, which can actually offset your advantage of this. Now, looking at the array of your arsenal available to you, aspirin stands as very good, actually. but no huge studies over here because many of these studies are industry funded. And we know that these are all billion dollar industries. Klexin itself, if you look into the uh, uh, Google, you can see that its annual sales is $3.1 billion. And they're rapidly it's increasing when you talk of any oral anticoagulants. So we really wanted to find out about aspirin, and the present studies are all very heterogeneous in the way they have studied, in the way they have recruited patients, the way they have evaluated, and so we thought that we need to do it in the Indian scenario. The previous studies have the problem of very few uh, patients included, and so we started this study to look at not only the incidence, but also what are the complications when you have, uh, when you do a prophylaxis? So this was from April to December 2014, and total number of patients where you can see the inclusion and the exclusion criteria were the normal. The group one had anoxaparin for till discharge, followed by aspirin. Group two had only aspirin, and all of them had pneumatic compression devices. Early mobilization was started in all. Now, preoperatively, they looked identical, the two groups in all the issues, and comorbid factors were the same. And you can see that in mean pre-op, post-op, everything, they are all the same. 
But the incidence of DVT, you can see between the two groups, whether they had only aspirin or whether they had uh, heparin, was there was no significant uh, difference. Now, complications were, however, different because in the LMH, uh, in the low molecular weight heparin, premature discontinuation was required in 3%. We needed to do a debridement because of hematoma was uh, significantly different. Major bleeding into the thigh was uh, different. Superficial infection was uh, different. So unacceptable amount of significantly different complications when we used uh, heparin. That led to our second study because in the previous study we had used only TKR. So we used, uh, did a prospective study on both THR and TKR. And this was from February to December 2016. The inclusion and exclusion criteria were the same. And uh, we used aspirin and intermittent pneumatic compression device. And you can find in these 904 patients, 142 were hip, 762 were knees, and the DVT rate, again, was only 0.6%. Uh, and no symptomatic pulmonary embolism in any one of these patients. So the overall statistics is like this. Um, and only the people who had uh, DVT, we started them on uh, Clexin. That led to the last part of the study, which was a prospective multicenter trial. And this was a, a work of the South Indian Arthroplasty Academy, four institutions, in one in Chennai, Hyderabad, Bangalore, and in Coimbatore hours were involved. And we studied prospectively 1,696 uh, cases. And it, uh, this is the spread out of the cases. And here you can find, again, that uh, demonstration of DVT was only in 0.1% by aspirin and uh, pneumatic devices. So of these nine, eight were after TKR and one was after THR. And uh, post-operative was six in the before discharge. One was directed at the one month follow-up, one at two months follow-up, and one at three month follow-up. But again, nobody had uh, clinical evidence of uh, embolism. So all these patients who were detected were then started on prophylaxis. So in conclusion, the incidence of DVT is very low in our population. This was our two prospective trials in our hospital and also in the multi-center trial. It was only 0.4%. Aspirin along with mechanical device is as effective as low molecular weight heparin for thromboprophylaxis. Of course, if you need to adopt a different strategy, if there were patients with high risk group, that's a different group. Uh, additional benefits of routine usage of only aspirin include low incidence of complications like superficial infection and hematoma, good compliance, and a lot of cost saved. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.